I last tended to this Miami Blue Beast about eight months ago. And what with it being such a stunner thought, it was only right that I returned to treat it to some top up TLC. Being properly used by its owner Roger Bailey then, this 718 Spider is no garage queen and while it's generally washed on the regular has been a bit neglected recently, meaning it was sporting a fair bit of dirt for a car of this calibre, including a few ironic spider webs, plenty of other bugs of the insect variety, a bit of bird poo and some other unsightly surface contamination courtesy of the volatile British summer skies. As I said in the cringy intro then, I decontaminated, washed, polished and protected the car back in November using the then unreleased Turtle Wax Hybrid Solutions range and because the owner had subsequently bought a bottle of the ceramic spray coating himself, thought I'd aim to get some of that reapplied. Because it's a car that I've already featured, I thought it might make things more interesting if I took the wheels off to give their barrels a good seeing too. However, I knew full well that jacking up, securing and removing wheels from a fully undertrayed car like this on a block paved driveway in the stonking summer sun wouldn't be the most straightforward of tasks, so I wasn't going to push my luck if it didn't feel doable. Before getting to grips with the Spider's wheels though, best of the best or the dream car competition company who've previously given away 34 million quids worth of cars to hundreds of lucky winners have once again reached out in support as they're currently running a one week only summer special. They've lined up 12 tasty cars to choose from, including a 215 grand 911 GT3 RS for £3.10 a ticket, and the new Taycan 4S plus 100 grand cash for just £2.65. And if that wasn't enough, for an extra 30p you could bag another 20k cash in the boot. Tickets start from just £2.20 and someone's guaranteed to win a new car or the equivalent cash. So if you fancy your chances, make sure you visit the links below and sooner rather than later as the competition ends this Sunday the 2nd of August at midnight. So my plastic sheathed safe sockets unfortunately didn't fit the spider's nuts so had to resort to a taped up standard one to crack them which wasn't a great start but I persisted by gently jacking the car up and removing the nuts which were actually bolts which makes removing and replacing heavy wheels even more difficult but hey ho wheels off wash and all that. Once the first wheel was off then it was placed on a drying towel covered bucket so that I could give its backside a good spanking starting with a healthy dose of all purpose cleaner and a pressure rinse to remove the bulk of loose brake dust and traffic film. It was then hit with a dedicated undiluted wheel cleaner which after being liberally applied was worked in with a chunky soft bristled detailing brush to release any more deeply ingrained dirt before once again being thoroughly rinsed off. Once I felt the barrel was as good as I could realistically get it without meticulously fingertipping every tiny spot away which I couldn't really afford to do here, gave it one last wipe down and rinse off with the washer before flipping it to tend to the other side. Now having been washed a fair few times before then the face thankfully wasn't as heavily contaminated as the barrel so a thorough going over with the wheel cleaner, an agitation with the brush and a shampooing with a soft wheel mitt was enough to bring it up to standard.
If I was to get the body cleaned and protected to a certain standard later, I couldn't dedicate much time to properly detailing the already tar peppered arches, so simply treated them to a healthy dose of APC and a thorough pressure rinse. I did however invest a fair few minutes giving the now exposed and easily accessible brake calipers a good clean as when the wheels are back on they're far more visible. So the still slightly damp wheel was then given a quick wipe over with a general purpose towel to remove any remaining rinse water in preparation for me to slap on some protection. I went with the matching Miami Blue Chemical Guys Jet Seal Matte which was applied onto and worked over the face of the wheel first with a soft foam applicator pad. Not being an abrasive product it doesn't call for any real elbow grease but at the same time you do need to ensure it's adequately applied and if that means going over a few areas a couple of times then so be it. What with it needing 20 minutes to cure before being removed, I flipped the wheel to give the slightly more battered barrel the same treatment, probably applying it a little thicker here as once back on the car it's less accessible on the face and is generally exposed to more brake dust and dirt. Once the residue had been given enough time to cure then it was thoroughly buffed off with a fresh general purpose towel to reveal a slightly more refreshed looking finish which would hopefully now be a bit easier to clean. Now being satin you're obviously not looking to obtain shine but a bit of richness and some light sheen is just fine. To finish up the first wheel then, I quickly dressed the inside tyre wall, as I know a lot of you watching would hate to see me put it back on the car still dry and unreplenished, so after being thoroughly worked over with a different sponge applicator than the one used previously, the inner rim was then wiped with a damp towel to remove any excess and that would have to be it as there was obviously still three more to do. Now, while I obviously wasn't going to film the entire process for each of the four wheels and arches, I did don the GoPro for a change of perspective for the second one, which after being pulled off the car, which was a bit of a ball ache due to already rusty hub-centric spline thingies, was treated to the same procedure as its wider big brother had been, so a good pre-wash and pre-rinse with the pressure sprayer and pressure washer. A dedicated wheel cleaner clean including thorough soft brush agitation. A quick iron remover application for the barrels.
plus a tar remover spritz and wipe down. before one final thorough rinse to remove the cocktail of potent chemical residue. I then employed a mini blower to help speed up the drying process a bit. Before the all-important application of the matte-friendly jet seal to make the semi-textured finish slightly more slick and less inclined to grab onto dirt. While that was curing, the manky front arch was given a pre-soak and thorough pre-rinse before the chunky red caliper was brushed up good and proper. So, with the wheel clean and somewhat protected, it was plonked back onto the car, which again was a massive faff and kind of made me wish I hadn't have bothered, but at least I could say I got my hands dirty. Ay, ay, ay. A good hour or more of off-camera wheel cleaning later then, it was time to give the body a thorough wash in, yes, the direct summer sun as it was unfortunately just one of them days, but you wouldn't be sat here watching this if I'd have cancelled due to a bright forecast, so just be glad of the fact it wasn't you having to tackle a car like this in the stonking summer sun. So after a quick pre-wash application to the lower parts then, the entire car, including the fabric roof which I hear is the bane of every spider owner's life, was covered with a nice thick blanket of snow foam to soften up the various different types of dirt. While that was soaking into the bodywork, I took the opportunity to brush it into the roof with a long reach soft bristled jobby as that's all that was really needed.
That was then rinsed off in unison with the rest of the car in a methodical yet efficient manner as I didn't want to let the sun get one over on me but also didn't want to be cracking the heavy chemicals out for further decontamination in this heat so had to ensure I still got as much of the dirt removed with the pre-wash products and pressure washer as possible here. I then went on to statically film myself contact washing the car as the GoPro had overheated which looking back was probably a good thing as you'd likely be suffering from motion sickness by this point. Now while you might be watching this and cringing at the prospect of products drying on the surface it's always better to let suds dry than plain unfiltered water as the shampoo serves to kind of encapsulate or neutralise the water spot causing minerals meaning that even if left to dry when you rinse off afterwards you simply reactivate the shampoo which takes the stubborn encapsulated or neutralised minerals with it. Granted it's not an ideal approach but definitely the lesser of two evils. Following a quick inspection of my wash technique by a budding future cleaning enthusiast then, I finished up with a good scrub of the Spider's lower sills and low slung rear diffuser which on a car like this tend to be the dirtiest and most contaminated body parts. Before giving the entire car one last rinse off, again being as quick but thorough as I realistically could as this would be all the paintwork was getting in terms of cleaning.
As soon as the final rinse was complete then, I quickly grabbed the plush contrasting coloured drying towel and ran it over the painted panels before the rinse water had time to evaporate. While water filters and blow dryers can obviously help in hot conditions like these, I still like to try and make contact with a plush towel on a car I'm not fully decontaminating, as I feel that it just leaves the surface ever so slightly cleaner. The door shuts which were quite grimy were then given a wipe down with a fresh damp general purpose towel to rid them of any light dirt that had collected over the previous weeks and months. And the freshly cleaned and protected wheels which had obviously been subjected to a bit of overspray and splatter during the wash were given one last wipe down inside and out as the satin black finish can easily spot and streak if you're not careful. The tyres were then dressed and while I'd usually go with something that gives more of a satin look out of the bottle to match the factory finish, could tell the rubber was dry and so would soak a fair bit of dressing product up so the thicker the stuff used the better but once buffed over to remove any excess afterwards the finish was just fine. The final part of the day was reserved for topping up any protection with the hybrid solution ceramic spray coating from Turtle Wax which as I say had been applied some time ago but have most likely now diminished. So for the most part it was simply spritzed onto an application towel, lightly spread over the surface in a manner that ensures all areas receive even coverage, then buffed off pretty much straight away with a separate towel to reveal a pretty slick and noticeably brighter to the naked eye at least finish. It can be applied directly to the surface and I have no issues doing that myself but for the sake of good practice and to avoid potential overspray and stubborn ceramic residue spots in these sunny conditions, just reserve the direct application for illustrative purposes in the shade only. Although the car hadn't been clayed or properly chemically decontaminated, it didn't feel rough at all which was good and kind of proves that the work carried out late last year must have done something. While this product can be used on plastic and trim too, I was feeling pretty pooped by this late stage in the day, so simply stuck to the paintwork as that's what gives you the biggest bang for your buck, especially with a colour like this. Standard general purpose towels usually perform well for applying and buffing products like these, but in tricky conditions I do sometimes step up to a more plush example like this Euro Double Density one just to provide a bit more microfiber surface area when final buffing. I finished up with a wipe and buff of the lower sills before I collapsed into a sweaty heap as being unable to capture any shiny aftershots after all that effort would have been pretty frustrating. And there we have it, so yes I'm well aware I pretty much broke all the rules on this one but as I've already said in order to get something relatively interesting filmed and uploaded for you before the end of the month couldn't really afford to wait for the stars to align. Obviously there's plenty more that could have been done but the car still looked better for its uh, day of filming and cleaning and now represented what I'd refer to as entry level acceptable.
The Miami blue paintwork was looking undeniably sharp in the summer sun and should repel the elements for a few more months to come. The wheels, which ideally needed a bit more attention, were still looking and feeling fairly fresh, and the car on the whole appeared a lot less neglected than it did at the start of the day. Hope you don't hold it against me for featuring this particular car again, but looking at it now, can you really blame me? Whether you do or don't know, cheers for tuning in all the same, and I'll likely see you with a driveway pressure wash presentation next time.